thank you so much. Let's pray. Father, we thank oh, you're not recording yet, are you? No. Yeah. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come and to, to represent you this morning, represent that thing. Lord, we pray that you give us a spirit of liberty this morning. We are so grateful for what you're doing. Thank you for the opportunity to still reach out to our people yeah. and to others who need to hear the gospel. We'll be encouraged. It's been a week of challenge for, for many. You know more than we do about any of those things. So we believe that you would have us to be here this morning. And we believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll use us where you're so doing. Help us to just enjoy. Yeah. Help us to rejoice. Help us to understand that it's not about us, it's not about how good we do. It's about what you do. We take our effort. We just do our best. And you take our effort and you make it golden like you did that last lunch that day. And you feed the multitudes. So you do that this morning. The glory of thy son Jesus. Give our, my sister uh, Nancy this liberty to sing this morning by giving her voice, giving her spirit. And then let us have ears to hear. And let the Spirit have his freedom to do what needs to be done in all of our lives. Bless the preaching. Yes. Bless all that's said and done. Amen. Bless the praying. God, you have your hand upon it. This is our sacrifice to you. This is our offering to you today. God, we just take it and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name.
Sister Nancy, I sure appreciate you coming today to help us with that. And truly, indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he touches us, he makes us whole. And uh, he wants to touch you today. And thank God that uh, he has uh, the ability to do that. I remember in the Gospels that the woman who pressed the touch, touch the Lord Jesus Christ. She said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, Amen. I'll be made whole. Uh, but when she did that, he stopped. And, and uh, when, when you reach out to touch Jesus Christ today, he'll stop. Amen. And then you again. And then great things will happen. We're glad you uh, tuned in to us today. I want to just say uh, hello to all of our church family. What time is it? Later than you think. Amen. We've got a couple other folks in the uh, building with us this morning. We're so grateful to have, of course, you know, Sister Nancy just standing up here singing for us. And then her husband, Douglas, of course, he's with us today. So we're grateful for that. My wife, Joanna, is here, of course. And then Charles, who will be up here in a moment, just to give us some announcements. And, of course, our producer, Brother Marty. So we're so grateful Amen. for those that come. And we've got plenty of room for others if you decide that, you know, your uh, level of, uh, uh, of courage and in the face of Corona, is at the point you come on down with us, and we'll make room for you. We've got sanitizer and PPE, and we've got gloves, and, and uh, we'll put you in the corner if we need to. And our membership is not that big, uh, so and we've got plenty of seats. So if you want to come down and help us with the service, and we're looking as we move further to in this whole Corona uh, pandemic uh, process uh, to kind of make our way back to church. And we're glad for those who, who were able to come. And, and pray for others. You know, now I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anyone. I want every man to be persuaded by his own mind Amen. concerning these matters. Uh, but you pray. And I know that our God is able. Yes, Amen. Amen. He's Amen. able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we may ask or think. And he's still interested in saving souls. He's still interested in uh, building his church and reaching people. So we thank the Lord for that. We're going to go to him in prayer. And I've got a couple prayer requests I want to pass on to you. We'll we praise God for First of all, for the privilege of being able to pray to him and all the wonderful things that he's done for us. In spite, in spite of all the things that have gone wrong, God is still good. Amen. God is still God, and he still has a purpose. And by the way, Romans 8.28 is still true. All things work. We know that all things work together for good. That would include this uh, corona uh, virus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, uh, pandemic. All things work together for good to those who love the Lord, those who are called according to his purpose. And so we know that he has a purpose in this, and we rest in that. And we know, consider the fact that uh, Romans chapter 8 continues there and talks about nothing being able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And he, he kind of aligns those things up. And, and I think somewhere around there's famine and those type of things mentioned also which would include what we're going through. It won't separate us from the love of God. Don't let it separate you from the love of God. It won't separate you from God's love, because these things can sometimes separate us from loving God if we should, if we get perplexed about what's going on. And uh, so I want to encourage you to just be steadfast, immovable, abounding in your love for the Lord Jesus Christ and in his work. The work still must go on. People still lost and dying. You know, I don't know if you've noticed, but people are dying from more than coronavirus. That's right. And they're not all old. There are uh, people dying still, and they need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we need to do what we can uh, to make sure that the message of the gospel, the light of the gospel, still breaks through the darkness. And how can they hear without us? So let's not cower back. And we know we're not able to do uh, what we were able to do prior to this, and there are some restrictions. Uh, but uh, if the Lord gives you an opportunity, and I believe that's what He's doing with us today. He's giving us an opportunity. We've got some folks who are not members of our church, who may be living in another area, who tuned in to us this morning. Amen. We've got some family members, perhaps. We thank you for uh, looking in our direction today. I believe that God will use this message. He will use his service to amen. speak to your heart. And then your part will be to respond. God's going to do his part. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. Do we believe that God's going to do his part? And then it will be up to us then to respond to the word. Charles is going to come, and uh, Amen. We, we're, we're going to pray, and Charles is going to come, and then he's going to share with us some announcements, and then we'll, we'll continue on. Father, we thank you once again for the opportunity to assemble here this morning, yes, and for uh, those who are in the building. We thank you for those folks, and we thank you for those who yet are on the internet or, or watching us by some other, or listening to us by some other means. 
we just pray that you would help them today to uh, be encouraged yes. to travel through this uh, testing time through this tribulation you, you promised us that that would happen in life that there's going to be some trials and some tribulation and so we uh, we accept that and we ask you to help us to be faithful uh, these things have not taken you by surprise they may surprise us and they may perplex us but God you are still in charge of all these things they are events of life. The events of life may be over our head, but they're all under your care. And so we thank you for that, and we ask you to give us what we need. Help us to continue to uh, live our lives in such a way that God would get the glory. We ask for your blessings on our service today. We pray for those who are ill. I know that there are some folks who are struggling physically, physically, not only with this virus symptoms, but also allergies and flu symptoms. A lot. This is a season. It's a changing season. And then that's just a regular things that happen in life, uh, we're just aging perhaps, and, and our bodies are not what they used to be, and we've been attacked by some other illness. And I just pray this morning that you would help us all yes. just have faith in God, that we trust in you, and that you would perform that which only you can do. And you bring glory and honor to yourself today. I pray for anyone that would be lost, that they would hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, accept the free gift of salvation, Come to know Christ as Savior. I pray for Christians today, those that know you as Savior, that their hearts would be encouraged and that we would stay focused upon what we need to do. And we're thankful for all that you've done so far. Thank you for allowing us to come this morning to get into the homes of people and to perhaps get into the heads of people. And Lord, we ask you, the Holy Spirit, to get into the hearts of people that they might be saved and that they might be certain and they might be concentrated on helping you to get the message to others who are lost. And we'll thank you for all that you do now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's all he comes. Thank you, sir. God bless you. We'll be eating chicken together later on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, we just want to say happy birthday to all the members that will be celebrating birthday this month. The month's almost over. So, uh, Brother Howard Fuller, who's on the 10th, and Brother Butler and Sister Butler, Brother Amen. Butler on the 1st, and Sister Butler on the 3rd, will both in the building this morning, so happy birthday to you all, and enjoy this despite the circumstances. Amen. So, we have a missionary letter from the Leland family. They are missionaries to Brazil. Amen. Uh, so, here we go. Most times, we start off our letters with what's been going on. However, in these uncharted days we're living in, our greatest concern is how have you been doing? As missionaries, our prayer chain is made up of tens of thousands of people across the country and even the world. It is impossible to send a letter like this without it reaching one of our prayer warriors who has been deeply affected by the virus. We are supported by churches, but the church is a collection of individuals. Every dollar that we receive comes from individuals who may have been laid off, may be sick, or some who may be among those who have passed away. As you have prayed for us so many times in the past, let me assure you that we are praying for you during this time. Amen. The news that we have planned to share in this letter has been somewhat preempted by the crisis that our world is facing. Even we have been affected. My pastor was diagnosed with COVID-19 and spent nearly two weeks in the hospital. Thank God he has recovered and is back Amen. at home. Amen. Please pray for Mike Baldwin, our assistant pastor, and my mentor, who has congestive heart failure and AFib and has been experiencing heart-related issues. He has been told that he cannot go to the hospital for fear that he would contract the virus. The reason we delayed this letter uh, is that there is just so much information that's still up in the air. As expected, all our meetings after March 15th were canceled with us being so close to heading back to the field with, to resolve the remaining meeting here in the state. Unfortunately, I have also joined so many others whose graduation has been canceled in May. While not being able to walk across the stage to receive my doctorate is a little disappointing. We realize that if we had not delayed our return to Brazil by a few weeks of graduation, we would have been we would have been set to head back and would have just gotten to Brazil as everything was shutting down for this crisis. The biggest area of concern at this point is our return date to Brazil, which is set for May 13th. The truth is that we do not know, not yet know what will happen. At this point, we are planning to uh, prepare to leave at any given time. Brazil has issued the same warnings as the United States.
states when citizens are being ordered to stay home. Because we have permanent resident status in Brazil, we can return at any time, but we will surely be required to quarantine once we get there. If the country remains locked, locked down through the middle of May, then it will be very difficult to arrive and start looking for housing. In that case, we would like we will likely have to delay our leaving until the lockdown ends. Mm -hmm. We are praying that we be able to leave on time, but we are asking God to give us wisdom as well. And we continue to pray for you. We continue to pray for us. <coughs> Mr. Leland, Naomi, Lincoln, and Lauren uh, Johnson, Leland Johnson. So let's pray for uh, the Leland Johnson family and our missionaries of all who are all going through uh, a trial during this time, but that we all know that uh, all things work together for good. So let's pray. <coughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, Leland Johnson family. Yes. That's uh, our missionaries to Brazil. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity mm -hmm. we've had to support them uh, all these years about the different things they're going through right now. We just pray that you keep them encouraged and lifted. We know that their heart is to be back on the field in Brazil and reaching the lost, but you have other plans for them right now, so we just pray that you just uh, help them through that. Uh, we thank you for the uh, accomplishment that Brother Leland was able to uh, achieve his doctor's uh, degree. We just pray that you just uh, keep him encouraged as well, which will be disappointing for him as well as many other college graduates during this time. And we just, uh, just pray that you keep them all uplifted. Pray for their retirement, that they be able to get back and do what they do while they're here, that they be able to uh, just take advantage of this opportunity that you've given them to take advantage of. So we continue to pray for them and all our missionaries, and we pray for the rest of the service this morning, that uh, everything we do be done for the honor, to your glory, and to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, Sir Charles. Appreciate that. Uh, that's his first time on back here behind the pulpit on a Sunday morning, helping us out, but he's been here each week that we've been able to come and broadcast and come here. I appreciate him and Maurice when we do. Amen. Thank them for the support that they not only lend to this preacher, but to this church and to the Lord. Mm -hmm. God will bless them, so thank you for that, Charles. What a blessing he is uh, to our family. We thank the Lord for him. He was born in England. Could you get his accent? <laughs> Scout. We call him Scout. Yeah, we call him Scout. Just want to ask you to uh, continue to pray. I got an opportunity this week to talk to Pastor Wallace over in Kenya, and uh, he, the folks at Office of Helping the Office Office of Kenya Project. I'm going to put that there so you'll be reminded uh, that uh, that we need to continue to pray for the project. We'll talk a little bit more about Kenya. You said, well, last week we talked about Africa. Well, I'm going to talk about a little bit more this week because. The conversation that I had with Brother Wallace just kind of refreshed my mind about some things, and it's going to actually match up with the message that, that the Lord has given me to preach this morning. So we just get some illustrations from that. But I want to ask you to make sure that you can go to OOKP.org. That's OOKP.org, just in case you haven't uh, been supporting the Office of Kenya Project. We want you to go to OOKP.org and look at the latest video. Brother Wallace will be, and, and by the way, that's for all of our folks. Uh, so you know how to pray for uh, Pastor Wallace and his family, brother, uh, his and his family. They're they're going through, and you'll you'll understand a little bit more when we see these slides. And I got some pictures to show you, uh, just a few things to share with you. But you'll understand a little bit more about their situation. But they need your prayers. Uh, the people of, of Kenya, the people around the world, they need your prayers. But our missionary, our uh, he, he's really not a missionary, but our organization that we come along to help assist, to feed the children, care for the homeless, uh, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave, weep over there, with them, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus, the mighty and slay them. We've been called to rescue the perishing. That's Amen. the song. And, and so what, what uh, Brother Wallace and his family have gone over there to do has been has met a large challenge. They need your prayers. And of course, uh, they wouldn't be able to do it without us. So uh, remember, OOKP.org, if you go and see the latest video, uh, but uh, it will help you out quite a bit, and then you continue to pray for them. If you're not supporting, uh, $20 a month, if you're not supporting, and I'm not soliciting, uh, just as the Lord put this upon your heart, I just want to tell you the opportunity is there. Uh, uh, the Lord uh, says that you cannot give God, uh, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Paul would say that the Lord Jesus said, 
And uh, so the opportunity to be a blessing, a small, you said $20 was that. Well, mm -hmm. it makes a difference over there, a large difference over there. And so you can make all the difference in the world. So, so having said that, do pray for Brother Wallace. And when you go watch the video, that you can find out the whole story about what's going on over there with them. Uh, God is blessing the family, but they've got some challenges, as uh, always will be. And then I want to ask you to pray for Pastor Ismail. Brother Wallace did convey to me, many of you know Pastor Ismail. He's been here, comes to America uh, every September and stays until December normally for, and has done that for uh, the last five, six years, I think, maybe even longer than that. But over the last three or four years, we've had an opportunity to know him and he's been here spending some time with us. Amen. But uh, when he went back in December, shortly after getting back, he became ill and Pastor Ismail has been over the last few months going back and forth with medical appointments. And remember, there's one doctor for every thousand citizens in Kenya. That's not a whole lot of medical help in the hospitals and all those things are just limited in number. But he's been going back and forth and recently uh, it has been discovered that he had perhaps a form of liver cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, his family is currently up in Nairobi with the doctors. Now Ro Nairobi is shut down. Uh, but they have allowed him and his family to come into that area. He has some relatives in the area of Nairobi from Nakuru. Uh, but uh, he, uh, he and his family are there seeking help, medical attention. So you pray for him. Uh, what a challenge it is for them in a time like this with all these other things going on to have uh, their leader, their husband, the father of their family affected by such a uncertain condition. But you pray for him. God knows. We may not be certain, but God knows. So pray for him and pray for others. I want to ask you to continue to pray for Debbie Smith. She's up at a hospital in Durham, and uh, she's still going through the process of them testing to find out what's going on with her body physically. So you pray for Debbie. And then pray for one another. Of course, uh, I'll pray for our nation, that God will forgive our sins and, and heal our land. Of course, uh, pray for Brother McAllister. Richard, we're thinking about you today. You know, if you have the opportunity to tune in on this one, we're thinking about you, brother. And, we know you're deployed, and we, we're praying for you and your family uh, in your absence. Thank the Lord for you. Uh, just be encouraged. The Lord is still God. He still rules and reigns. So we thank the Lord for that. I also want to remind you this morning. Oh, by the way, yeah, yeah I just remembered. I got a, my offering today, my tithe. And so we'll put that in. And I don't have uh, the deacon sitting back there in the two chairs to remind me uh, about the offering, but, but surely will. Thank the Lord for the privilege of giving. And that, by the way, the need is still there. You heard Charles share, Brother Leland Johnson, one of our missionaries, and we have other missionaries. They're still there. And we think about Brother Wallace and those folks. And supply lines have been cut off in a lot of ways, and the opportunities have been limited somewhat. So they still need us to support them. So if Amen. you uh, are thinking, maybe you don't need to support the church, mission program through the church, and you don't need to tithe, let me ask you, to rethink that. Amen. Pause for a moment and rethink that because these things still go on. God is still blessing you, I'm sure. He hasn't cut you off completely. Uh, he might be testing you to see where your heart is. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that we need to remain faithful to those things. So you can uh, you can come by the church, actually, if you wanted to, and bring your offering and your tithe. Uh, but if you uh, don't choose to do that, if you'd rather stay at home, then use the mailbox. We gave out last week the church's P.O. Box number. I'll give it out again this morning for those who may not have tuned in last week. It's P.O. Box, Bethel Baptist Church, P.O. Box 35064, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28303. Let me give that again. P.O. Box 35064, Fayetteville, North Carolina, <laughs> 28303. And, and I, yeah, I'm just not used to doing commercials and those things. And just standing here looking at this uh, tablet and not uh, getting the feedback from the faces and of the folks is just a little bit challenging, uh, but we'll get past it. And we thank the Lord for that. Okay, well, thank you once again. I can't think of any other announcements. Just want to say to our church family, we miss you, and, and I know you miss us. Some of you may be smiling, you know, miss us in a bad way, but we thank the Lord uh, for, for you. Thank you for your prayers for my family. Uh, thank you for your prayer for the lost. Thank you for still loving the Lord. Thank you for taking the time this morning to, to 
you should have the things that we are going through here. And I pray that the Lord would use the message this morning to just uh, challenge our hearts and assure our hearts that he is still God, he's still God. Having said that, I want to thank Sister Nancy once again for that special this morning. It's a blessing as well. And uh, we thank her for coming and helping us this morning. Thank my wife. She's been uh, just, we've been spending time together getting to know each other this year. And Amen. We've had more time around the house. And I'm sure that's probably true for you also. Uh, we get to know each other again. I hope you like what you find. <laughs> Amen. And the Lord is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you would uh, be complete and entire, wanting nothing. If you don't like what you find, just pray. Amen. Pray to God change you. Amen. We often say pray for God to change others, but we need to pray for God to change us. So we thank the Lord for that. Well, I see y'all ready for the mess. I can't think of anything else. Am I forgetting something this morning? No? Time is moving on. We'll just ask you to continue to pray for uh, our family. I miss you. I miss hearing from you. Call us, text us, let us know what's going on with you now. If you haven't been uh, keeping contact with the pastor, I'm not that busy. That, that I can't answer the phone or answer the text, but please do. Uh, so we know how to pray for you. Amen. Uh, we, we just trust that everybody's doing well. Uh, but that may not necessarily be the case. And you know how we are. We can sometimes be a proud people. And sometimes pride gets in the way of what we actually need. And so if we just uh, allow the Lord to humble us, humble ourselves, and then God will exalt us in time. And he'll connect us with those things that we have need of. We never know. We have not because we what? Okay. Ask not. And then we ask and receive not because we sometimes ask for not what we need. And, and that's a time, this is a time where people maybe get to change their priorities a little bit. A time where maybe we realize that some of the things that we've been dependent upon and wanting and not really what we need, and God is kind of showing us uh, what the important things are. We are prioritizing our lives. If he'll do that for us. If uh, we allow him to, or we can resist it and rebel and, and uh, kick against the whatever process that God is using, or we can just cooperate with him and say, what are you doing, Lord? And learn the lesson. Amen? Amen. So thank you for that. we got some of these flyers available. If you want one, let me know. I can send you one so you can put it up on your uh, refrigerator or something. The refrigerator is probably the place that you use more often than anything else these days. And, and then you'll be reminded to pray for the Office of Kenya Project. And I want you to take your Bibles this morning. We thank Maurice for putting out there the, the advertisement for the message this morning. It's entitled, When Rags and Riches Walk Together. We talk about the rich and the poor. Uh, when Rags and Riches Walk Together. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 2 is what our text that we kind of get the thought from. But we'll be sharing quite a few other scriptures this morning. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 2 is where we will begin. And I'm going to switch mics here so I can get this orange one out. I won't use the red one because that's for singers. Amen. And you don't want me to sing. I mean, up close or from a distance, uh, that is just the what not, not what God has called me to necessarily do. I'm glad that he has put some singers in my family. And we were at home just a couple of days ago. My wife came and ran into the room. She was really excited. She says, you're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. I said, what is it? And she had the video on her phone, and it was of our son. He was singing his favorite song Amen. as he was working out or something. I can't remember what it was. He might not be working out. But he was, yeah, he was, what he was doing, he was working it up. That's what he was doing. And he was singing it for his sister, who was over in Texas. And, of course, she got excited about it. She, and she said, I didn't know he could sing. Well, I didn't either, but Amen. I guess he got that from his mom. But, uh, you know, the, the Bible says, well, you can have a song in your heart. Sing it to yourself. Make a melody in your heart to the Lord. And, and that's what we should go through our days. And, and, and when you're going through these days with the coronavirus or maybe just the pressure of being uh, at home with one another or not having the convenience of being able to go out and do all the things that you normally do, uh, remember the word of God. Remember the songs that we sing. Those things have a message, and the message in the music, and put a song in your heart, and you'll finally make your day better. And uh, just remember the Lord in these times. Amen? Don't forget Amen. God. Well, Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 2. Well, let's start at verse number 1. Proverbs 22 and verse number 1. The Bible says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Amen. 
and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And then our text verse today, uh, the second verse says, the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. Amen. Father, bless your word now. Thank you for the privilege to stand and proclaim it. But I know that, uh, that it is the spirit that giveth life to the flesh will part the remember. So I present to you my flesh and body. And I pray that you make it wholly acceptable to you and that you would use it. Thank you for this message. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the ability to communicate it. Uh, but Lord, it's not my ability to communicate that's going to make a difference. What the people need to do is they need to have their hearts conditioned by the Holy Spirit to receive what you've said for us. You know where we are. You know each of our situations. You know what we're going through. No one else may know. But I believe this morning, with all my heart, that you want to meet our needs. God, you will if we allow you to. So take your word and divide it severally as you would. Jesus did that last lunch for him. And feed the multitudes. May our hearts be changed. May our lives be challenged. May Jesus Christ be glorified. And may someone be saved. May some saved person be certain. Help us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Have you noticed how unfair life can be? Mm -hmm. Have you noticed how unfair life can be? Think about it for a moment. If you were born, say, within the last 100 years in America, uh, and you finish some level of education, whatever level you finished at, and you got a job, uh, the coronavirus hit, or COVID-19, some like to call it, or whichever you prefer, you probably have the option of Working from home, Amen. currently, or, or continue to work mm -hmm. under uh, protective measures, That's PPE, right. all that stuff, or filing for unemployment benefits. Well, at any rate, uh, the the government decided to assist you financially, whether you needed it or not. For some of us, you know, this stimulus or whatever the correct name for this incentive that the government is it costs. Over two trillion dollars. I don't want to talk about how much money two trillion dollars is, mm -hmm. but whether you need it or not, the government decided that uh, they would come alongside you and assist you financially. Mm -hmm. And your options of food choices are more limited than they were before yeah. uh, this took place, but they're still multiple. Amen. On the other hand, if you happen to be born, I'm going to show you some slides now. Uh, Maurice, can you can you? Uh, Help us with the pictures here. I'm just going to share my voice. But if you happen to be born and a resident of Kenya in East Africa, the COVID-19 hit, and the question of the day becomes not what am I going to eat, but am I going to eat? You know, life is not the same. Look at this, the scenes here uh, from um, Friday, April 10th. Thousands of people surged for food aid in a, in a what was a brief stampede Friday in Kenya's capital, leading police to fire tear gas and injure several people. Uh, and the stampede, witnesses said uh, people desperate for help as coronavirus related restrictions make it uh, more difficult to go out and Make a living. Residents of Nakuru's uh, Kibera slum, and by the way, that's what you're looking at uh, there in that picture, and the one before that, y'all. Go back to that one. Uh, this is the slum of Kibera. Uh, this uh, is the stampede, but uh, that one, yes. Uh, this is a picture of the slum. It's it, uh, Kibera slum. It's located a mere four miles from the city center, which Nairobi happens to be the capital of Kenya in East Africa, and this slum is located four miles from the city center. It is the largest slum in Nairobi, and the largest slum, urban slum, in Africa, and the population is figured to be somewhere between, it can be up to uh, 500,000 and a million people, depending on which slums are included in the defining uh, Kabira. Uh, they, they try to, the, re the re residents there, you can go ahead to the next slide, this is a close-up of uh, trash policy. They don't get uh, trash picked up there, 
Uh, so it just kind of piles up until it rains, and they're in the rainy season now, so it gets washed down, but this is uh, the conditions under which uh, the people in the slums there live. Uh, they, they, they tried to force their way through, the stampede took place because on Friday, April 10th, the, the people tried to force their way through a gate for their chance at supplies to keep their families fed for another day. For another day. The, 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 this is the scene of, of Kenya's largest slum. It reflects the fears of, a, of, a, of millions across Africa uh, as nearly 20 countries have imposed full lockdowns and others have shut down cities or imposed curfews. A vast population of informal workers with limits and no savings uh, worries about the next meal as, as no one knows what the measures will, the measures will end. Already, Rwanda and South Africa have extended their lockdowns by two weeks. In this Nairobi uh, chaos, men with sticks beat people back as they fought over packages of food. Some men wore face masks dangling from their chin, and some people fell and were trampled, as you can see here. Dust rose, the women shrugged, uh, shrieked. Uh, injured people were carried to safety and placed on grounds to recover, grasping for air. There was a woman with uh, some twins, and, and she was injured. And even as the reporter was recording this story, uh, she was looking for the twins. It is food we come for uh, since we're dying of hunger, uh, the people would say. One man interviewed said, Kenya's government appears to have no plan to feed him and millions more. Have you noticed how unfair life can be? Think about it for a moment. The rich and the poor have much in common. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Brother Douglas. You know, Proverbs 14, turn with me there. Pray for the people of Kenya. I know last week I shared you some Kenya. Every week we're going to be in Kenya. No, just, uh, I just wanted to let you know, uh, as you're having your week this week, and you know, a little difficulties perhaps, you have a few inconveniences. Just remember uh, that uh, there for the grace of God go I. God elected for you and I to be born in America. Amen. Uh, he doesn't love, there's no more love for me than for the people of Kenya. That's right. He doesn't love you more than he does the people there. Uh, he just, by his divine providence, has elected so. And to whom much is given, much is required. And how, why he's done all those things, if you can take that up with him, I have no idea. But I do know this, that he loves those folks. And he uh, has given us an opportunity to maybe help them. Maybe that's the reason why we've been given a little bit more so, so we can be a little bit more. Uh, but as you go through your week this week, I want you to consider that. Uh, this message, when rags and riches walk together, and Proverbs chapter 14 gives us a little bit more insight to what we just saw here, and and that's echoed. Kenya, by the way, is not the only place those types of things are going on, uh, but uh, uh, just a, a part of the whole process, I guess. If you would just turn with me to Proverbs chapter 14, and look at verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 14, and verse number 20. The Bible says the poor is hated even of his own neighbor. But the rich has what? Many friends. Many friends. He that despises his neighbor sinneth, but he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. Proverbs chapter 19. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them both. Chapter, chapter 19, Proverbs chapter 19. Look at verse number 4. Wealth making many friends. Have you noticed that? Well, <laughs> wealth making many friends. Yes, sir. But the poor is separated from his neighbor. Trample over one another. Step on one another. See the mistreatment that we have towards one another uh, in life. And the Bible says, uh, wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. And now in verse number seven, it says, all the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He pursueth them with words, 
yet they are wanting to him. In other words, no matter what he says, it's not going to change their minds about the direction. When rags and riches walk together, you ever notice that life is, this life can sometimes be unfair. The rich and the poor have more in common, though, than this world uh, ever dreamed of. In the eyes of men, they uh, may seem to live in two different worlds. But from the perspective of God, uh, they're not as far as apart as they may appear to be. In the world's view, uh, they, these two worlds, the rich and the poor, may seem as far apart as the North and the South Poles. But in the eyes of Almighty God, they have much in common. They meet together on many points. And we're going to talk about that this morning. Jesus often talked of the rich and poor. You remember in, in the conversation uh, with uh, uh, some followers in Luke chapter 16. So turn with me there. One of those conversations took place recorded there by, by Dr. Luke. In Luke chapter 16, this is a very familiar account. Of, uh, the, the, uh, of Jesus speaking about the rich and the poor uh, in the same uh, sentence, using them in the same story. They, they uh, uh, meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. And so we find here in Luke chapter 16 a very familiar story. You are. I don't have to give you all the details concerning it, but we'll just look at it for the benefit of our message this morning. In Luke chapter 16, verse number 19, the Bible says, uh, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, mm -hmm. and fine linen and fair sumptuously every day. Well. There was a certain beggar mm -hmm. uh, named Lazarus. Which man was it named? You don't have to necessarily name him if he's got a status. Right. Uh, but the Bible here talks about Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores mm -hmm. and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the Bible says in verse number 21, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Not surprised by that. Uh, but also, uh, the Bible says it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. Amen. But also, the rich man also died. Well. And the Bible says the rich man was buried. No mention of the beggar being buried because that implies that the rich man had an elaborate funeral. And, and of course, the beggar didn't have money to afford one of those things, and no one actually cared uh, that he would get one of those things. But uh, the difference uh, there uh, begins to uh, end as far as earth is concerned. But the Bible says in verse number 23, and in hell, now speaking about the rich man, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and says, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, verse 24. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. This is a tragic account of a rich man who mistook his soul for his portfolio. And at this moment, he's suffering the anguish, torment, and remorse of being lost in a place called hell. I won't read the rest of the story, but you remember. Well, let's read the rest of the story because maybe you don't remember. Verse number 25 says, But Abraham says, Son, he is a descendant of this uh, Abraham. We call him son. He's a descendant. In other words, he has some religious affiliation, uh, connection with Father Abraham, the father of the faithful. All uh, religions, monastic, mo uh, all religions, the major religions, that's what I want to say. All the major religions, even a lot in our time today, are attached to Abraham. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, uh, every major religion, the three major religions, because there's only three major religions, are attached to Abraham. And this guy had an attachment to Abraham. Abraham called him son. He says, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest uh, thy good things, and likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, Amen. and thou art tormented. And then he says, and besides all this, it, it, between us and you there is a great gulf thick, so that they which would pass from thence from hence to you cannot and neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. But all the words come from you. Then he said, Well, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my brother, my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. 
It's a real play. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a place of torment. There's no one drinking beer with their friends and all these That's things right. that you hear people say, when I get to hell, I'm going to do this and that. They have no idea uh, of what, what does take place in hell. But they should because the Bible reveals it here. Jesus preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Why? Because he don't want men to go there. He knows the real place and real people go there. And there's real torment there. And, and this, this man also, I guess he didn't believe in hell either until it became a reality. Uh, but now it's too late. And, and he says, well, uh, no hope for me. Then tell my brother. Hey, that's why we're here this morning. We're yes, trying sir. to tell his brother. Maybe Amen. you're a descendant of this man. Maybe you're lost and you've got your priorities wrong. Maybe the riches of this world have blinded your eyes. But the truth of the matter is that we're trying to answer his prayer. Amen. He's praying from hell. That's something right. that he should have done on earth. Amen. He should have been concerned about his soul while he was here on earth. He should have been concerned about his brothers while he was here on earth. That's right. And, and uh, now he's concerned that maybe they follow his Right. Maybe they looked at him as the big rich brother and thought, well, I'm going to be just like him when I get well, done. And mis maybe he's realizing that they're mistaking their portfolio for their soul. But nevertheless, Abraham said unto him in verse number 29, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. When he talks about Moses and the prophet, Jesus is saying, they've got the word of God. Amen. Book of Moses, the first five books of the Bible, what we call the Pentateuch, Jesus was referring to that. They have the prophets, that's the writings of the Old Testament, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all those, uh, even the minor prophets, uh, Hosea, and Nahum, and all those. He says, they got the Old Testament. Now, of course, Jesus is speaking about uh, during the time of the writing of the New Testament. They were reading the Gospel of Luke, so they didn't have the New Testament letters, but they had the Old Testament. In other words, uh, Abraham said to him, they have the word of God. Let them hear the word of God. And he says, nay, Father, like many people today. Uh, nay, Father, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. In other words, send some miracles. Send some mighty miracles. Send someone back from the dead, they repent. And God says, Jesus said to him in verse number uh, 31, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise or rose from the dead. Amen. In other words, uh, if they don't believe the word of God, then I don't, I don't believe, and it's been proven by history, that there's no miracle that can convince us. Why? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God has vested his power. You know, as we think about this and thinking about my uh, Pentecostal friends who are having a pretty rough time now, some of their preachers who claim that they had the power to raise the dead and all these things. And now that this pandemic has hit the country, we've got some people, and I'm not here trying to poke fun at anybody, uh, but we've got some people who are asking those folks, hey, where you at? Come on, show. We need your help. When you're having those big tent crusades and all those other things, when everything's fair, we talk about the power that God has vested in you, and now it's time to perform, and uh, there's a whole lot of pressure put on these guys because they misunderstood the scriptures. Yes, sir. They misunderstood the, understood the scriptures, and I'm not trying to uh, make fun of anyone, uh, but there was one of those preachers not too long ago on public television who uh, actually, he answered the call, he, somebody called him out, and he answered the call, and so he stood up and rebuked uh, COVID-19 and he told coronavirus to go away and obviously it had risen. Uh, here's someone who claimed to raise the dead. Now, if I'm not trying to be a wise guy, but death is the ultimate enemy. If you have power to raise someone from the dead, then the illness should be no problem for you. That's right. That's right. So, I'm going to leave that there. But the Bible says that we need to be wise. And we need to uh, check the spirits. Test the spirits. Don't believe every spirit, but test the spirit. Amen. And see if they be of God, because there are many false prophets going on through the world, false teachers. But we read here the tragic account of a rich man who mistook his soul for his portfolio in this moment. This very moment, by the way, he's still in a place called hell. The poor man died and went to a place called Abraham's bosom. Uh, Abraham's bosom is the resting place was the resting place for the souls of those who uh, were
were saved, but uh, Jesus Christ had not died yet. And so uh, uh, based on him, Jesus coming and dying and shedding his blood and, and being buried and then being raised from the dead and ascending back to heaven uh, to the throne of God, anyone who died with faith in Christ went to this place called Abraham's bosom compartment. We don't have time to completely tell you all the details concerning that, but it's a place uh, that was uh, called paradise. And uh, Abraham and all the faithful were there waiting for uh, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ that he could bring them with him. There's a lot to that. We don't have time to explain all of it. But understand now that the Bible does not say that the poor man died and, and was carried uh, to, uh, uh, by, by the way, it does say that he was carried by the angels right. into the presence of God. And, and as the rich man is in hell today, by the way, the, the poor man is in the presence of God today. Amen. As if when your status changes, it changes permanently. Amen. That's right. Now, now, now the Bible does not say that the rich man uh, died because he was rich. He didn't, he didn't die and end up in hell because he was rich. Neither does the Bible say the poor man ended up in heaven because of his poverty. That's right. So those things have absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, and the Bible does not say that the rich man or shall not enter to the kingdom of God. Now, you may hear some preachers say that, but that's not what the Bible says. Would you go to Mark chapter 10? If you just go to Mark chapter 10, I will show you how the rich and the poor uh, meet together. Uh, the Lord is the maker of them all. God has so fashioned some folks to be rich and some folks, folks to be uh, poor, and, and uh, that's just life. They told Jesus when he was on earth, Jesus reminded his disciples, he says, the poor you always have um, right. among you. There'll be an opportunity for you to do something for them. He, they were uh, just perplexed by uh, some inequalities in life, and you and I will be that way sometimes. But look at Mark chapter 10 and verse number 22. In Mark chapter 10, you remember Jesus, uh, verse number 17 says, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeling to him and asking him, good master. What, what identified the good master? Jesus said there's none good but him, and he is the good master. He says, but the question is, and the question that we all should ask, and the question that we uh, sometimes ask, he says, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Amen? Amen. And, and uh, who's interested in having eternal life? Amen. All of us are. All of us should be anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, but there's a, a foul... A, the, there's a problem with his question. He thinks that an eternal life can be inherited. And many people do think that eternal life can be inherited. You know, the, uh, my daddy was a preacher. Well, well, my daddy wasn't a preacher, by the way. But, but uh, just, just because your father's a preacher don't mean that you can inherit eternal life. That's right. Uh, it doesn't matter what your background may be uh, or, or what your foreground may be. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you're like, it doesn't matter what your finances may be. Right. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you don't have eternal life. And, and so eternal life can't be inherited. But Jesus here asking this young man uh, the question, verse number 18 of Mark chapter 10, and Jesus said unto him, why well, call God me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So that's a good start. And he called him right. Now he needs to identify if he's really just repeating words. Uh, because many people do that. Just repeat what I've heard. Right. Or does he really understand who it is that he's talking to? And so he comes up to Jesus and says, oh, good master, good Lord. And yes, praise the Lord. Uh, there's only one good. His name is God. And let me say that again. Amen. There's only one good. His name is God. Now, do we do good things? Yeah, we can do good things. But as far as God is concerned, you and I are not good. That's right. He wants to make us good. Thank you. Jesus came that we could be good. And, and through the new birth, we become good and acceptable to him. But he's, uh, back to the story, <laughs> back to the story. Uh, um, he, he said to Jesus in verse number 18, uh, Jesus said to him, in verse number 19, thou knowest the commandments, Jesus said, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he, and he didn't get done before the young man interjected. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I done, observed from my youth. Mm. Boy, that's a stretch, wouldn't it? Amen. Yeah. Uh, he didn't have to do that perfectly. 
Now, he's probably pretty popular himself, and I'm not trying to give the young man a bad reputation. He could have been a very good young man. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that all of us have sinned and come short of God. That's right. That's right. And, and, and then, then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, verse number 21 says, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest then, Hello. Uh, go and sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor. That's right. Now, he's not asking you to do that. He's asking this young man to do that. Because he's teaching him a lesson. He's bringing an observation. But sometimes we can be good with words also. Mm -hmm. But God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he says, and, and, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up thy cross, and what? Follow, Follow me. Follow me. And be committed to me. If I am the good master, if I am God, then you should be able to give up all. You should be willing to give up all. Yes, sir. And follow me. If I am who you say I am, or who you just proclaim that I am, then you should be willing to trust me. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, and he was sad at that saying. Why? Because Jesus challenged him. And remember, he said back in verse number 19, uh, in verse number 20, he said, all these things I've observed from my youth. And Jesus had just quoted to him, you know the commandments, God knows the commandments. Well, what's the first commandment? Help me out today. What is the first commandment? I am the love, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other God before me. And Jesus said in the New Testament, what is the greatest commandment? He says, just love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. And, and, and then he said the second one was love thy neighbor as thyself. But the first commandment is this. Uh, thou shalt love the Lord. Put nothing before him. Love God. Amen. And he said, I kept these commandments from my youth. Obviously, he missed the very first one. And Jesus called him out on that. But my point is this, verse number 22. And he was sad at that, saying, why? And, and went away grief, for he had great possessions. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did he have the possessions or did the possessions have him? And see, he, we have to realize that if there's something in our life, and Jesus, by the way, is calling everyone to discipleship. Amen. Come and follow me. If you believe that I am who you say that you believe I am, then you should be willing to do whatever I say because I'm God. That's right. Uh, uh, not only am I God, but I'm a good God. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm the only God. That's right. And I never do anything wrong. I never right. make any mistakes. Trust me. That's right. But the young man says, he looked at his wealth. He looked at his wealth. That's right. And he says, I don't know if I can trust you with this, Jesus. Amen. Some of us are like that. Sitting on that, which God has blessed us with. I don't know. It's God that gives you the power to get wealth. That's right. This young man could have been born somewhere else under any other condition. He could have been a resident of Kenya. It was God who allowed him to do that. But the Bible says that the young man was grieved. And he went away grieved. But look at this disciples. Verse number 23. And Jesus looked round and said unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And from this, someone has drawn the idea, and some people have drawn the idea, see, I told you a rich person can't go to heaven. They can't. No, that is not what Jesus said. Look, if you would. And the, by the way, that's what the disciples thought. Look at verse number 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words. Why? Because the disciples were like us and many other people. They believed that if you have great riches, if you have great prosperity, then you must be blessed of God. Mm. Ain't that what the prosperity preaching is? Amen. Hey, get right with God, get saved, and all your troubles will go away. You'll get money, and you'll get wealth, and you'll get health, and you'll get that pretty girlfriend, or you get that handsome boyfriend. Or you, whatever your desires, your heart desires be, God will give it to you. Well, right? That's the message. Well, it's kind of natural to think like that. Look, if you would, at the disciples. The disciples were astonished at his words. Why? Because if this rich man, who came with this good reputation, if this young rich a ruler who came with this good reputation and had kept the commandments as far as they knew, if he couldn't get to heaven, then who would? Well, come on. They were astonished. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, verse number 24, Amen. how hard is it? For them that trust in riches. What are you trusting in today? 
See, what he revealed to the young man was what he was trusting in. That's right. And what gets us in trouble is what we're trusting in. Listen, God's not against people having riches. He's the one that gives it to them. But he don't want you to trust in riches. But God's not, God's not concerned about your beauty. He, 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 he's the one to give you that. Amen. He don't want you to trust in that. That's God's right. not concerned so much about your talent today. He's the one that gave you that. But he don't want you to trust in that. He wants you to trust in him. Amen. And the young rich man's problem is that the Bible says he had great wealth, but the truth of the matter is that his wealth had him. That's he right. had great possessions, but no, the truth of the matter is that his possessions had him. And there's a danger with that always. What's God calling us to today? What's God calling you to today? Is he calling you salvation? Well, I would get saved, but uh, maybe you are saved. You broke past that one because I'm, I'm, I'm sure we all were there. I remember before I got saved, there was a lot of obstacles in my way uh, to, to, to between me and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that he didn't give up on me. Amen. I'm, I'm glad that he helped me to realize that it would profit a man nothing to gain the whole world and lose his soul. The most, most precious thing that we possess is our soul. And so I'm thankful for that, but 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 there are people who I am, or what others may think, and I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Great possessions, and that's what they're trusting in, trusting that one day they'll stand before God and those things. How foolish! And this young man walked away. I hope he walked back one day, but the Bible doesn't say, well, he walked away. And uh, so, verse number 26, and they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, says, with men it is impossible, with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. All things are possible. So, Jesus also spoke of the rich and poor, rich and poor there, uh, rich and poor in worship, as they both came to the temple to give. Luke chapter 21. Amen. Jesus often spoke of the rich and poor in the same sentence. And highlight it for us here in Luke chapter 21, another lesson. When it comes to worship, that's relation to the world, as it comes to worship, in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, the Bible says that he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. Luke chapter 21, and verse number 1. And he looked up and saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in that are two mites. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they are. For all these have of their abundance cast in into the offerings of God. So they gave out of their abundance. Now, hey, by the way, there's nothing wrong with giving out of your abundance. Amen. He's not criticizing what they gave. He's just talking about how she gave more. That's right. Amen. And he's not criticizing. Understand that. He's not criticizing. If you giving out of your abundance today, you're doing Amen. more than a lot of people. That's right. But there's something greater. If you want credit, he says, uh, don't hold back there. Just give all you have to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's be willing to. He may not ask you for all you have, but, but be willing to. And he says, this woman, look at you, with this widow, this poor widow. Amen? Amen. But she of her penury had cast in all the living that she had. Wow. Verse number four. Wow. He's looking... That day, the Bible says it, verse number 21, and he looked up. Amen? Amen. But I want you to know today, in the time which we live, he's looking down. He's looking down today as we look, uh, as he looked up then to take notice of our giving. Mm -hmm. You keep that in mind the next time the offering plate passes you and you have an opportunity to give. Amen. But two great practical lessons here. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still looking to see uh, if our heart where our mouths are. Anyone knows where our treasure is? 
But two practical lessons here today that we've learned, uh, hope you see the, the people who observe the extravagant life of the rich man in his elegant home, his fine attire, and the high dollar mills, and those that praised and applauded the riches they cast in their abundance. Uh, I'm sure they did, you know, they put it in, made sounds, and uh, uh, profoundly, they probably looked with disdain upon that widow as she put her little two mites in. Here, the unseeming parallel uh, of lives of the rich and the poor meet together, and man looks and says, blessed are the rich, and blessed are the famous, and, and God looks down from heaven, and and he says this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. As God, the maker, looked down from heaven upon the lives of these people, what did he see? He sees uh, not what like we see. God does not see in terms or think in terms uh, as we do. So uh, this, the comments got away, but let me give you these four things, these three things that, uh, that uh, where the rich and the poor meet together. Number one, the rich and the poor meet together in death. Say it again, please. The rich and the poor meet together in death. Amen. They meet together in death. Uh, we saw that there in this uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 is, uh, you don't have to turn there. I'll quote it for you because uh, for the sake of time. Uh, they meet together in death. The Bible says, and it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Amen. They meet together in death. We read in the book of James, James chapter 1, verses 9 and 11. It says, let the brother in low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withers the grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fast of it perish, so shall also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. When God appointed time comes for a man to die, I want you to know this, all the riches of earth cannot buy another heartbeat. That's right. Nor one more breath of air. Mm. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about it, though. Uh, the rich and the poor, they meet together in death. The Bible says in the book of Job, Job 7, verse number 7, Oh, remember that my life is when. My life is when. Mine eyes shall no more see good. Job 14, 5. Seeing his days, man's days are determined. The number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. That's right. When God determines, I don't care how much money or how much fame or how much fortune a person may have. That's right. The rich and the poor meet in death. My life and your life are merely shadows, according to the book of James. James chapter 4, and verse number 14. So where is you know not what shall be on the morrow? Mm -hmm. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. My life and your life are merely shadows passing quickly across the face of the earth. Amen. Fragile, unstable, mm -hmm. and soon gone. That's right. Death is no respect of person. It never stops to consider if one is rich or poor. Have you thought about that? Whether one lives in a palace or in the gates of the palace. Whether one fares sumptuously daily or desires the crumbs that fall from someone's table. The rich and the poor meet together in death. But not only that, the rich and the poor meet together in sorrow. Job 14.1 says this, man that is born of a woman. Have you found that out yet? Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of sorrow. All people. Let me say this again. You may feel like it just happens to me. Don't we always say, why did this happen to me? Uh, listen, everyone has sorrows. That's right. All people have sorrows. And, and tears and the road of life is paved with, with uh, heartaches and burdens. And uh, what an enormous uh, thing it is, an erroneous thing to think that only the poor have trouble. That's right. Only the poor have sorrows. Listen, everyone has sorrows. Amen. Job says, man that is born of a woman. Born to a sinful world has sorrows. The poor and the rich and the poor, they meet together in death. The rich and the poor, they meet together in sorrows. But the, not only that, the rich and the poor, they meet together in judgment. Yes, sir. In judgment. I want you to turn with me to the book of Revelation. It's the last book in the New Testament. The revelation of Jesus Christ. And it seems like we're getting closer and closer to the time of the book of Revelation being fulfilled. Amen. Amen. I mean, we see a lot of things going on around us and a lot of things that you see that Jesus talked about in Luke and in the Gospel of Matthew 
and then the end times according to the book of Revelation, those are tribulation times. Those are after the church age. That's after the rapture. Those are those are things that happen as, and as God is dealing with Jacob's uh, descendants and uh, the nation of Israel. And, and, and if my Bible, if I understand the Bible correctly, then there are seven years of tribulation that will take place. But I'm a, by the way, I'm a pre-trip rapture Amen. person. So I, I believe that the rapture will occur before that begins. And so therefore, if we're that close to those things taking place, how much, what time is it? How much nearer are we to going home? Paul says in Romans, when he told the Romans, he says, now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Don't, it's no time to be backing off. There's no time to be quitting. There's no time to be unfaithful. Now is more time than ever to awake out of sleep and, and uh, live for the Lord. Amen. Love the Lord. Don't let the years that you uh, serve him uh, get lost in, in the cause. Revelations chapter Six. Amen. Revelation chapter six. We find the sixth seal being opened here in Revelation chapter six. Look at verse number fifteen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter six, and under the opening of the uh, uh, sixth seal here, we're, we're already at the end of tribulation because you know in the book of Revelation it goes back and forth, different seal judgments, the bowl judgments, and they're kind of described in different ways, but it's all leading to this final uh, climax here, the unveiling of the Antichrist and the false prophet, and then the Lord Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 19 coming back to earth. Uh, but when we get to chapter 6 and verse number uh, 15 here, we find this, uh, the kings of the earth, the Bible says, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and the, every bondman, that's by the way, a bondman is a slave, it's a, a rich, poor person, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, oh, fall on us. Wow. Fall on us. What a, what a request, huh? Yes, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. If you want need to know who that is, you go back there and read chapter 4 and, and chapter 5. And from the wrath of the Lamb. I think we know who that is. And for the, uh, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand. Listen, the rich, did you notice the Bible says the rich man and the poor man all stand uh, in fear of him during that time. Look, if you would, at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Look at verse number 7. Uh, during the tribulation, the rule of the Antichrist, when this unholy trinity sets up rule, and, and I'll tell you what, as we talked to Brother Walsh about this the other day. As we move through these things, and we have the quarantine and the controlling of things, and did you see the mark of the beast and the, the system set up by the Antichrist that you can't buy or sell and, and control all those things? Do you see the, the conditions being set and the control of the people? And the, and the people just willingness to, I mean, just a fear of, of what's going on. Can you, I, years ago, we would have thought, this can happen. Well, it's going to happen. And we can see trends of it now. Just the fact that I'm able to stand here at Bethel Baptist Church down here on 300 Andy Street. And you can see me on the other side of the world now. Amen. I mean, this, this, these things are moving along fast. And the systems are there. We don't even know. We really don't even know uh, all that's out there. Uh, but we do know this, that there's coming an Antichrist before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, and, and let's read a little bit about it here. Verse number 7 of Revelation chapter 12. It's getting late, but and the Bible says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was there found place anymore in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, verse number 9. Uh, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. That's he right. was cast out into the earth, and we could say amen to that, uh, but, uh, but lead on, read on. And his angels were cast out with him, those that came in this uprising, those that think that he's able. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And verse number 10, and I heard a loud voice saying uh, in heaven, now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Uh, verse number 11, I'm sorry, 
and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Mm. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Why? Because uh, uh, the Bible says, <laughs> and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had what? But a short, a short time. time. That's right. And in this last stages of the tribulation period when the devil is on oh, full force against you, think he's doing things now, but wait until then if you want to. I don't plan on it. But uh, he's coming full force. And, and I want you to see here in Revelation chapter 13, verse number 16. Amen. The information system, he comes down and sets up the system. We don't have time to talk completely about Revelation. Uh, what happens there, but I want you to see here. The Bible says, uh, we got to read a little bit more. Verse 11 uh, says, And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. And this is symbolic of a leader who comes from a certain nation, a, a Gentile nation, that's what the earth represents. And he has his power, uh, and he speaks to the dragon. He has a, a horns of a lamb. You're reminded of a lamb, right? Who's a lamb? His name is Jesus. He's got this uh, following that's He's got the, what some what was symbolized the, the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a, he's a, one of the antichrists, and, and he speaks to the dragon. But I want you to see verse number twelve says that he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to what worship. to worship the first the first beast, which deadly one was healed. And he doeth don't miss this part now. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven and on the earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he has power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound of a sword and did live. In other words, he was raised from the dead, resurrected, and, 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 and he had power to give unto the image of the beast life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This will happen in the tribulation period. I'm glad I'm not going to be here. Amen. And I'm encouraging you, exalting you, and challenging you to get saved so you won't eat there. Amen. What time is going to be? And, and the Bible says, and he calls all, look at verse number 16, and he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor. Mm -hmm. Rich and poor. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I've had a rough time in life, and if things been rough, and things get worse, it should get better. No, you still find the rich and the poor. That's right. Free and bond. To receive a mark in their forehead. You see the rich people uh, getting the mark. Well, the poor people too. Amen. Everyone. Why? Because if you don't receive this mark, verse number 17 says, that no man might buy or sell, say that he doesn't have the mark. Mm. Yes, sir. Can you see the systems being put in place? Look around. I'm not saying we're there. I don't believe we're there because I'm still here. Amen. And every Christian's still here. And I don't believe we can get there until they get here, until we're gone. But the rich and the poor, they meet in judgment. The final judgment, Revelation chapter 20. Thank you for your patience. Revelation chapter 20, look at verse number 12. Tribulation's done. We don't have time to study the book of Revelations today. But the tribulation is done. The Antichrist system, they, they set up this system. Jesus Christ comes back in chapter 19, puts down the Antichrist, locks up the devil, uh, deals with all those who rejected him and all those who sided with the devil, and sets up his kingdom. Uh, uh, he allows the, 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 the in chapter 20, uh, he's chained up this uh, enemy. He allows him to be loose, and he comes back out after a thousand years, and he causes this rebellion. Uh, Jesus, of course, puts that away. And here we find uh, the heaven and earth and everything that we know today is, is, has been um, made to vanish. And there's man standing out in front of eternal God. I want you to see verse number 11 of Revelation chapter 20. There's a whole lot there, but we don't have time this morning to deal with that. But I want you to see this here. The Bible says, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. From whose face the earth, that's that planet that we live on, Come on. and the heavens. That's those things that we can see with eyes and telescopes and all that that God created in those, back in Genesis in those days, fled away. That's right. 
And, and the Bible says that there was found no place for them. No place to hide. God just made it vanish away. Peter talks about how it does that. In verse number 12, and I saw the dead. Look if you would at verse number 12. And I saw the dead. Small and great. That's rich and poor. Small. That's poor. Great. Rich. Stand before God and the books were open. And the, another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. According to their what good thing might I do to have inherit eternal life? Nothing. That's right. They are judged upon the works. I want you to see this now. And the sea gave up the dead which went in. And death and hell, what an awesome, we talked about the fierce foe of death. Well, guess what? That's not the final place. That's right. Death is called to bomb it up or to give up. <laughs> I didn't use that term. Give up those that it has captured for thousands of years, they get delivered from death. Mm. But remember what the place where the rich man was? Mm. In hell, he lifted his eyes. Remember, he's still there. Yes, sir. Well, it had to give him up because why? It's time for judgment. Look if you would that. The Bible says in verse number 12. Well, no, we, we, we don't want to go that far yet. Uh, verse number 13, we're down there. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which in them. And they were judged, what? Every man according to the works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And look at here, if you would, at verse number 15. And whoso was not found, what? What's the secret there? The Bible says they were judged according to their works. Guess what? Nobody's work worked out for them. That's right. The Bible says that whoso was not found written in the book of life. It didn't say whoso was found worthy by their works. That's right. There is not a person, there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. You and I, by works of righteousness, will never be able to please God. That's why we need to have our names written in the book of life. Listen, the rich and poor meet together. And by the way, rich and poor, great and small, God is the maker of them all. They meet together in death. Rich and poor meet together in sorrow. The rich and poor meet together in judgment. But thank God, John 3.16 says, the rich and the poor meet together in salvation. Amen. You're not too rich to be saved. That's right. You're not too poor to be saved. Thank you. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. Amen. 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 For God so loved the world. That would include every person. That's right. That would exclude no person. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, between the Jew and the Greek, between the rich and the poor. For the same Lord over all is rich in all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul said. And yet, though he was rich, he became poor, that you in his poverty might be rich. In this world and in this life, and you'll see it there, there's a great disparity between the rich and the poor. But not as far as God's concerned. That's right. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil deceive you in thinking that that difference makes a difference. He's the maker of them both. And if you're not saved, it doesn't matter how rich you are or how poor you are, you're going to meet God. That's right. You're going to meet God. Are you prepared? He wants to save you, but for whoso shall call upon the name of the Lord. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that there are some places that you and I can't go because of our financial limitations? <laughs> there are some things that we can't do because of our financial limitations. Oh, some of us have more limits than others, and some of us have more resources than others. But the truth of the matter is that you run out of resources too. There's some things that money can't buy. But they, all of us can be saved. If you're not saved today, would you pray this prayer with me? If you never trusted Christ, I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about anything other than trusting Christ, receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me? If you mean it, 
But with the heart, man, believe it brings righteousness. Mm -hmm. Mouth. Confessions make salvation. Mm -hmm. But whosoever believeth, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Romans chapter 10, and verse number 17, shall be saved. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege we have to approach your throne of grace and mercy. Thank you for the word of God. Yes. Thank you for, uh, Lord, making some of us rich and others poor. Thank you for the way you've done it. We don't understand it. Sometimes we don't even agree, but the truth of the matter is that that's life. And so help us to see our place and find our part. And we thank you for the privilege we have to just hear your word and to know it and to uh, be able to help others to uh, hear it, to learn it. And we pray for those that may not be saved today. Yeah. We're not talking about religion. We saw that in the life of those in the gospel. We're not talking about curiosity. We saw that in the young man. Uh, we're talking about those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ or those that don't have a relationship. Would you help them today to understand that you stand ready to save them? There's no amount of money they can give. There's no amount of effort they can exert. They just have to believe the gospel and trust Jesus. So I pray this morning for anyone who would be lost that they would just simply ask you to save them. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. The Bible says so. I'm just agreeing with you. The Bible also says if I call upon you to save me, you will. There's no sin so great that it can't be forgiven. There's no sin so light that it doesn't need to be forgiven. Thank you that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. So I pray you help the lost person. And then help us, Lord. Maybe your children who wander far away from you. Maybe we're drifting. Maybe this pandemic has given us occasion to do what we've been designed to do for a long time, just drift away from the safe shores of salvation. We're not going to be lost. We're going to have a lost life. Maybe we're beginning to trust some things that we shouldn't be trusting. Whatever it is today, you find us. Would you help us? Thank you, Jesus, for speaking to us today. Thank you for giving us the time today. Take from our week. Just spend with one another. Amen. I just pray that the word of God would have free course in all of our lives. And that we go back and study these truths out. We're not Berean Christians. I just accept them because the preacher said it. But accept them because they are the words of God. Because one day we're giving account. So we thank you for the privilege we have. Thank you for Sister Nancy and Brother Douglas coming and helping us. Thank you for my wife. And thank you for Maurice and my son Charles. Thank you for all those who tuned in today. Thank you for the privilege of standing before you. We know not if we have another opportunity to get right with you. But we use this one today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.